Welcome to this MATLAB help video where we're going to be talking about creating flexible for loops. In the piece of code on my screen right now, I'm setting up a 2 Hz sine wave with a variable dt or time step between the points. So right now my code clears everything, closes all the windows, clears the command window, and then I set the parameters of the sine wave right here. Uh, the frequency of the sine wave, the time step of the sine wave, and the end of the time interval. Then the code creates the signal. In this section of the code with creating the signal, um, we create a time vector, and then we use the time vector to create our simulated signal vector. Finally, the code plots the signal, uh, the time versus the signal with red dots, and creates a true signal line with a very, very finely sampled uh, time behind or line in gray. And so it creates a graph that looks like this right now. And in this video, we're going to talk about how to make multiple graphs with different frequencies uh, to demonstrate the use of a flexible for loop. So let's say that we wanted to compare what it looks like if we used time steps of 0 0.05, 0 0.01, and 0 0.005. So three different time steps. Well, one way to do that would be to just change the DT every time, run the code again. And you can do that. And for something small, that's not too bad, um, but it's not the most efficient way to do things. So we're going to go ahead here and use a for loop to do that. So each time we're going to do that, uh, we are going to want to recreate a time vector because our time vector will change length. And we're going to want to recreate a signal vector as well as plotting. So uh, I'm going to type a comment here, use a for loop to uh, make the iteration process more efficient. And you can do this anytime you want to read in files, anytime you have something where just a couple of things are changing. So the way that we're going to do that is we're going to use the for command. And you'll note that it turns blue. And I'm going to use a variable that I, here I'm just going to call k for count. Um, you can call it whatever you want as long as it doesn't overwrite something else in your code or a constant that you need in MATLAB. So I'm going to say from k equals 1 to 3. 3 is the number of samples or number of time steps that I want to use in my code here. And then I'm going to go down to the bottom here and I'm going to go through everything I want to do and I'm going to type end to end the for loop. Note that it turns blue again and highlights. Um, and if we really want to be neat about our code, then we would go ahead here and take all of this and indent it one step so that it's indented in the for loop. And now if we run the code, we should see that three different graphs pop up and they have all of the different, oh, nope, and they all look the same. Three graphs pop up and they all look the same and that's because we didn't actually change DT. And you'll notice that DT has this little orange squiggle under here and it has a note if you hover over that says variable DT might be set by a non-scalar operator and that's MATLAB picking up on, and you'll notice that that orange thing shows up as a warning uh, here in the side too. Okay, that is picking up on the fact that up here at the top, dt is a vector and not a scalar. So what we want to do inside our loop here is reference the appropriate iteration of the loop. Okay, so I'm going to type parentheses k, close the parentheses, and now when I run the code, we'll see three graphs that show up with three different sampling frequencies. And you can see that there, those three different sampling frequencies. So that's a relatively flexible piece of code right up until one of these goes away or we add another one. And if we take one of them away and now we try and run the loop, run the code, it's gonna get upset with us. It'll do the first two, but then it can't find the third one because we took away DT3 the index exceeds the array bounds. So to be a little bit better with this, so we'll go ahead and put this back in here, 0 0.005 is our other time step. To be a little bit more flexible with this, we want to use a command that automatically resizes that last, the end of k, how many times we run through the loop. So uh, I'm going to use the command size here, and my variable is dt. You can go into the MATLAB help and check out uh, how to use the size command. 
And because I've set up dt to be a vector, so really this is dt looking like this, if you think about how you would write it out on paper, that's not how we write it in MATLAB. Um, so I'm not gonna run the code this way, but it's really a three rows, one column matrix here in MATLAB. Um, so because of that, I want to uh, use size of uh, one, okay, index one. So size comma of my variable comma one tells MATLAB that we're iterating on the number of rows in the matrix. If I put a two here, this would, uh, this would tell MATLAB that we are iterating on the number of columns in the matrix. So one indicates uh, that we run through or iterate through iterate through number of rows in DT. Okay, so again, you change that to a two if you had instead of we'd done this with commas here instead of semicolons, then we have a matrix that is a one row and three columns, and then we would use a two right here. But I like row matrices, so we're gonna go ahead and use the one and the, the rows. Okay, so now if we run this here, we'll see that we again get our three things, our three graphs. And furthermore, if we wanted to do add another one, if we add another one here, now, zero, zero, one, run that. Now we get four graphs, and this last one is that fourth one, the new one that we haven't seen before. Okay, so that's how you write a flexible for loop in MATLAB. I hope this helps you figure out how to use and adapt for loops to whatever uh, instance you're using them in. If you have any questions, please post them in the comments or send me an email. Thanks.